Hi, this is Charlie Christensen with a quick look at laryngeal anatomy or the anatomy of the voice. Have you ever heard the term vocal cords? Well, we don't use that term anymore. We call them vocal folds, which matches more what they look like and how they move. Here are some. You'll see how they come together to vibrate and make a sound. Can you guess who vocal folds those are? That's right, this guy. Pretty gross. This is the larynx, where all of our vocal sounds emanate from. Air comes from our lungs, passes over our vocal folds, which vibrate and create speaking sounds and singing sounds. Vocal or laryngeal anatomy can be difficult for some to comprehend based on the fact that our larynx is housed within our body. But anyone can kinesthetically interact with their larynx just by touching their Adam's apple. And everyone has an Adam's apple, whether you're a male or a female. Your Adam's apple is actually the front of your thyroid cartilage. So if you look at this picture, the bump here in the front is actually your Adam's apple. You can feel this move around by swallowing. The larynx is an arrangement of cartilages and muscles whose original function was to keep particles out of our lungs, but which has evolved to be really the epicenter of all communication in the human body. All vocal sounds emanate from the larynx. This is an illustration of the larynx sitting on top of the trachea. This is the pathway that air takes to go into our lungs. And here you can see that the larynx acts as the gatekeeper to the lungs. I'll pause for a moment to discuss the difference between cartilage and muscle. Cartilage is flexible but keeps its form kind of like a bone. Muscle is a series of fibers that contract to either move our body parts around or keep us in place. There are three cartilages that make up the larynx. The thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and two arytenoid cartilages. The thyroid cartilage sits on top of the cricoid cartilage, and the two arytenoid cartilages are housed inside of the thyroid cartilage. Here's an illustration of the two arytenoid cartilages from the back view of the larynx. You can see how they sit inside the thyroid cartilage and sit on top of the cricoid cartilage. Here's a view of the larynx from the top. And here you can see the two arytenoid cartilages sitting up top, housed within the larger thyroid cartilage. This is a great view to see how the two vocal folds, which are called the thyroarytenoids, and they're named because they connect the thyroid cartilage to the arytenoid. You can see how they're stretched across the span of those two cartilages. These are our vocal folds, and when air is blown over them, they vibrate, creating the basis of all vocal sounds. The two arytenoid cartilages, which your vocal folds are connected to, down to your thyroid cartilage, can come together and move apart. When you take a breath, the two arytenoid cartilages are apart, allowing air to pass through. But when it's time to talk or sing, they come together. Even just by thinking a pitch or thinking about something you're going to say, your arytenoid cartilages will come together and stretch to make that pitch. There are a number of muscles in the larynx, but the two most important types to remember are the thyroarytenoids, which span from the arytenoids to the thyrocartilage. We abbreviate that to TA, and the cricothyroid muscles, which go on the outside from the cricocartilage to the thyroid cartilage. These two muscle systems are important for controlling pitch when speaking and singing. The thyroarytenoid muscles are related to the pitch when we're singing or speaking in our chest register, and the cricothyroid muscles are related to when we're singing or speaking in our head register. The cricothyroid muscle is sometimes referred to as the singer's muscle, and is the muscle system most engaged when we're singing in our head voice. The cricothyroids span from the cricoid cartilage on the bottom to the thyroid cartilage on the top. And when the muscles contract, they pull the thyroid cartilage forward, which stretches our vocal folds and allows us to sing a higher pitch. As the thyroarytenoid muscles and the cricothyroid muscles tighten, our pitch goes up. When we do a mixed register, we're actually using some combination of both of those muscle systems to change the pitch. 
This is a cross-section of the thyroarytenoid muscle, also known as the vocal fold, or some people call it the vocal cord. Notice the different layers in the thyroarytenoid muscle. The key layer for vocal health is the top mucous membrane, which is called the epithelium. This is one of the biggest reasons why it's important that singers and speakers stay hydrated. As the epithelium dries out, it can lead to a number of other vocal issues. In addition to the three different cartilages that make up the larynx, there's also one bone that's talked about as being related to the larynx, and that's the hyoid bone. You'll see in this image as the larynx almost hangs from the hyoid bone as kind of a rafter. In addition to the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, there are also extrinsic muscles that surround the larynx. These are important to consider because of their relative size and strength compared to those intrinsic muscles in the larynx which control our pitch. And this is why many voice teachers will go for a free and relaxed shoulder and neck. If you ever see anyone's vein popping out of their neck, they probably have some tension in these muscles and that tension is likely translating to the larynx. The larynx is just one component of the vocal instrument, but it's important to understand as a fundamental building block towards many other concepts, including registration, phonation, and vocal health. Thanks for watching. Make just one someone happy, make just one face to face you say.